Tokyo, Japan and South Korea pledged on Friday, May 25 to continue working towards a summit between the United States and North Korea, while China's official China Daily newspaper urged both countries to maintain contact despite the torpedoed summit. South Korean President Moon Jae-in, who was apparently blindsided by U.S. President Donald Trump's announcement, said he was very perplexed and sorry that the summit was cancelled. Denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula and ensuring a permanent peace are historic tasks that cannot be delayed or forsaken, he added. South Korean Foreign Minister Kang kyung hwa and U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo agreed in a phone conversation to continue working towards creating the right conditions for the United States and North Korea to talk, a statement from the South said on Friday. On Thursday, Mr. Trump pulled out of what would have been the first-ever meeting between a serving U.S. president and a North Korean leader, a summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un set for June 12 in Singapore. Mr. Trump said the meeting was inappropriate given the North's tremendous anger and open hostility. In response, Pyongyang struck a conciliatory tone on Friday, with North Korean First Vice Foreign Minister Kim Kai Gwan saying in a dispatch via the official KCNA news agency that Pyongyang was willing to sit down with the U.S. at any time, in any way, to resolve the problems. Mr. Kim said, We remain unchanged in our goal and will do everything we can for the peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula and humankind, and we, broad-minded and open all the time, are willing to offer the U.S. time and opportunity. In China, the official China Daily on Friday urged both the U.S. and North Korea to continue to keep in contact even if the summit has been cancelled. Using the acronym for the North's official name, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, it said, China has urged the DPRK and the U.S. to hold firm their commitment to dialogue in order to move relations forward. It also reiterated, China's commitment to a detente on the Korean Peninsula, even if Mr. Trump expressed doubts of China's role in Mr. Kim's little change in attitude after he met Chinese President Xi Jinping for a second time in just weeks. An end to hostilities and denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula are the goals that many countries have been working for in the past decades. Which is true of China, whatever, Trump might suggest to the contrary, the China Daily editorial said. Japanese Foreign Minister Taro Kono, who is on a visit to Mexico, told reporters that recent trends have hurt the atmosphere for the would-be talks. We had been watching the commitments by North Korea towards denuclearization, he said. But judging by recent trends, there is no other conclusion that the talks, if they happened, would lead to denuclearization. He stressed that Japan will continue to coordinate its policies with the U.S. and South Korea, with an eye towards eventually realizing a summit meeting. The South's unification minister Cho myung gyan meanwhile, said Seoul will press ahead with improving ties with Pyongyang. He said, according to the Yonhap News Agency, it appears that they remain sincere in implementing the agreement and making efforts on denuclearization and peacebuilding. South Korea will do its part in carrying out the Panmunjom Declaration, Mr. Cho said. This refers to the deal struck by President Moon and Mr. Kim at their landmark summit meeting in the Truce Village of Panmunjom on April 27. They had agreed to bolster ties and push towards denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Putin, Kim, did everything that he had promised in advance. Mr. Trump's announcement came hours after the North before visiting international journalists, reportedly blew up the Pungiri nuclear site where all of its six previous nuclear tests had taken place. To this, Mr. Kono said, if the nuclear test site is truly abandoned, nuclear tests will never be repeated. If the North is sincere about tackling this issue, it will never fire a missile again. Japan on its part will prepare resolutely for any emergencies while watching North Korea's response, Russian President Vladimir Putin, speaking in street. 
Petersburg after a meeting with French President Emmanuel Macron, pointed out that North Korea was fulfilling its promises its dismantlement of the nuclear site. Mr. Kim did everything that he had promised in advance, even blowing up the tunnels and shafts of the nuclear site, Mr. Putin said, in remarks reported in the Associated Press. After which we heard about cancellation of the summit by the United States, he said that Russia regretted the cancellation. We had very much counted on it being a significant step in sorting out the situation on the Korean Peninsula and that it would be the beginning of the process of denuclearizing the whole Korean Peninsula, Mr. Putin said. Mr. Trump, speaking to reporters after pulling out of the summit, had said the decision was a tremendous setback for North Korea and indeed a setback for the world. A U.S. official has said, on the condition of anonymity, that Pyongyang failed to turn up to a preparatory meeting in Singapore with the White House Deputy Chief of Staff. They waited and they waited, the official told a background briefing in Washington. The North Koreans never showed up. North Koreans did not tell us anything, they simply stood us up, Mr. Trump's pullout came hours after the DPRK had through a statement by Vice Foreign Minister and longtime nuclear negotiator Cho Sun Wei called U.S. Vice President Mike Pence a political dummy and threatened nuclear-to-nuclear -nuclear showdown after he said the North could end like Libya. The statement by Mr. Kim, the first vice foreign minister, also pinned the blame on the U.S. for its so-called tremendous anger and open hostility, which was a reaction to the unbridled remarks made by the U.S. side which has long pressed the DPRK unilaterally to scrap its nuclear program ahead of the summit. The North has since last week reacted strongly to U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton's proposition that the so-called Libya model be used for its denuclearization. Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi was murdered years after he surrendered his nuclear weapons program. Pyongyang has also said that unlike the nascent Libyan program, it had successfully achieved intercontinental ballistic missile capabilities that will allow it to launch strikes on the U.S. mainland. Kobe University security expert Tash Minahara told The Straits Times, I think even if they Met, the conclusion would not be something that would bring permanent peace, it would most likely be very unsatisfactory and a temporary peace at best. This outcome forces us to realize who we are dealing with, and how apart their positions are.